Hello and welcome to In My Element. In this video, we're taking a look at the periodic table. Now, before we do that, there are four elements there, the symbols for four elements. Are there any there that you recognise? So you've got HE, FE, AR and O. Now, I think some of these you will have come across before, but you may not know them. So do you also know where to find the information on these elements? So where would you find those symbols and then learn the name and also maybe find out a little bit of their properties? I'm hoping that at this point you would know that they are in the periodic table. I'm going to learn a little bit about that in a minute. Now, just to tell you what each one is. So HE is helium. FE is iron. Notice how the symbol doesn't represent the letters from the name on that one. AR is argon and O is oxygen. And they're all found in different places. OK, you need to be able to locate some of these. And certainly in Key Stage 4, there's a lot, there's a much bigger expectation on your knowledge of the periodic table. So Key Stage 3, we're just sort of getting you used to it. Now, what you do need to know are some periodic table facts. And what we've got here for you is there's an image there in the left hand corner of the periodic table. Um, you can see that it's done in different colours. Different um, images of periodic tables are represented in different ways. What you need to know, don't worry too much about the numbers. Look at the letters for now and look at the general layout. So the block in the middle, that light green block. Um, the two blocks at the side, the red and the orange block, and then the block that is separated from the yellow. So the different blues and the purples. And we're going to talk about what each of those blocks that I've just mentioned are named. We're also going to talk about what the columns are called and what the rows are called. Now, firstly, this periodic table was first developed. We do mean first, it's been developed. More information has been put into it over the years. But firstly, it was developed by a Russian scientist called Dmitry Mendeleev. So Mendeleev is a name that you will come up against and that you will recognise and hear about quite a bit. Um, they might ask you questions on this and they'll talk about Mendeleev's periodic table. They might not have it in that format. They might have loads of information missing from it because he did it gradually. Now, Mendeleev wrote this periodic table because he was beginning to notice similarities between elements. And what he did was he grouped them together. So he grouped them together in columns. Now, he gave the columns and the rows different names. So the columns, if we look here, this is a column. We'll take this red one here and there's a little number one up here, which we'll talk about in a minute. The columns are called groups and the periods... So the rows, the rows are called periods. Now you've got group one, group two, skip this main block here, group three, group four, five, six and seven. Used to be that this final group was called group eight. It's more commonly known as group zero now. And in each group, the elements are grouped together because they have similar properties. What you also need to be aware of is that the properties in a group can be used to predict the reactivity of the different metals within the same group. So if you did one reaction, let's take group one, for example, because these are also known as the alkali metals. If you did a reaction with lithium and then you did a reaction with potassium, say you reacted both of those with water, the reactions of those two elements would enable you to predict the reactions if you put cesium into water. Now, I'm going to look at this a little bit bigger here because you need to be aware that we separate this out. Now, I want you to look, I've added this line here. This is what I was talking about here. OK. So obviously, aluminium is a metal, but boron is not. Now, we know that oxygen is a non-metal because we know oxygen is a gas, the same as we know that helium is as well. All right, so you follow that line and that separates it out. Now, up there, group one and group two are the metals. Already mentioned that group one is also known as the alkali metals. These are also metals, group two. This block in the middle here is called the transition metals. 
And we've got the block I was talking about at the end that is known as the non-metals. And then we'll just label. And then we'll just highlight that we know that this row here, or any row, in fact, is known as a period. But obviously, a column is known as a group. Now, we mentioned the patterns and reactivity. So I've taken some elements there. You've got Li, Na, K, Rb and Cs. They are all taken from group one. They are your group one elements, group one metals, also known as the alkali metals. As you go down the group, so as you follow that arrow from lithium through down to cesium, they become more reactive. So if you react lithium with water, there'll be a small reaction and you will see some fizzing and some gas given off. When you react potassium with water, mentioned this just now, you will see more fizzing and there'll be a flame given off. OK, it will ignite. However, rubidium and cesium react even more fiercely with water and explode. There are some really good video clips of this, particularly with a programme called Brainiac, where they show some reactions. It's quite silly, it's quite fun, but you can see the extent of those explosions. They're worth having a look up. Um, and watching those just so you can see the difference between lithium, sodium and potassium compared to rubidium and cesium. You may well at some point through key stage three in your science lab see um, your science teacher, your chemistry teacher, react lithium, sodium or potassium with the water so that you can see the reaction that takes place. You won't be allowed to do that reaction yourself. It will be one that's done in a controlled way. So that's a group one pattern. Next pattern is I've taken five of these elements here. They, they are from um, group seven, so the opposite end of the periodic table, group seven, and they are also known as the halogens. Now, these elements do the opposite. Look, the arrows change direction. So they become less reactive as you go down the group, which means they become more reactive as you go up the group, that's why I've changed the direction of the arrow. So fluorine is the most reactive. And then it decreases in reactivity as you go down the group. And then, as I mentioned, they're also known as the halogens. You need to be able to recognise some of these symbols. Notice there, you've got the capital letter and then the lowercase one if there's a second letter as well. It's really, really important you write them correctly. You won't be asked to write them very much now at Key Stage 3, but you will be at Key Stage 4, so we want you to get into a good habit of doing that. Now, I've got next four elements, OK? You should be able to access periodic table. If you can open one on your internet browser now while we're doing this, do. If you've got one in a revision guide next to you, do. If you're watching this while you've got your worksheet out on your second go, then have a look at that as well, because that's got a, an image of a periodic table or skip back through this to have another look at the periodic table earlier. But I want you to have a look for PB, C, KR and BA. And I want you to say where they are. So if they're in a particular group or whether they're a metal or a non-metal, and their name. Hopefully you've been able to locate PB and you found that it's lead and it's a transition metal so it's in the middle section of the periodic table. C is carbon and it's in group four. Remember the groups are the columns. KR is krypton known as group zero and a noble gas so that's the end group at the end on the right hand side of the periodic table. And BA is barium, which is group two, second group in. OK, that gives you a good overview of the periodic table, different elements, a little bit of history about the periodic table and what it tells us.